Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're not going to be doing the puzzle on the screen, actually. The puzzle on the screen is yesterday's puzzle, which is called Framed by Math Pesto, and very good it was too. But what we're actually going to be doing is a puzzle that Mark's sent me a link to, um, which he's recommended I open live on camera. So that's what I'm absolutely going to do. In fact, why don't we do that? Let me just copy and paste it into the into the thingy and here we go what have we got to do we've got <laughs> yeah look at this we've got a, dig a, a grid with basically nothing in it and we've it's called miracle triomino by samantha Mukherjee. now samantha is well he's a very good constructor but he's also i always think of samantha as one of those people who's got a very odd brain in the nicest way i mean that a, 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 a man who thinks differently to other people so his puzzles can be very very difficult um i'm just scanning the rule in fact why don't i read you the rules and then we can learn together what's going on today so we've got normal sudoku rule supply the marked diagonal contains nine different digits in ascending or descending order. Ah, well, I can get a digit in this puzzle then straight away. Um, so this diagonal has got all the digits one to nine, and we either go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine from the other direction. Uh, along the thermometer, digits must increase from the bulb end. So this has got to be the lowest digit on the thermometer, and then we sort of work our way up. As we, as like mercury rises, the digits must rise along the thermometer. And that's not going to be enough to solve this puzzle. So what's this last sentence? The sum of the digits, the sum of the digits in every possible straight triomino, orthogonal or diagonal, is divisible by three. What? <laughs> what? I was not expecting that. That, that's enough to solve the puzzle. That cannot be true. The sum of, let me just read that again. The sum of the digits in every possible, so that's a straight triomino. A triomino is, is just an extension of a domino. So that means three cells connected either orth, orthogonally, which means sharing an edge in a straight line, or on a diagonal, is divisible by three. That is, well, that is wondrous. I, I am skeptical that this puzzle is going to be solvable in a video though, because that sounds, although I do, I, although I can get a digit very quickly, I have no idea how we're going to solve that. Um, but anyway, I have a couple of announcements to make before I try. Hopefully my brain will now percolate over the problem and provide me with the solution in about one minute. Right brain, that's what your job is. Anyway. I need to start by saying a very happy birthday to Alex today. Now, Alex, you've turned 25, I think, and you live in New Jersey, if I'm not mistaken. Your friend Gioli uh, let us know this. And I believe, well, I won't hold this against you. I believe you're a huge Arsenal fan, but you've also become a massive fan of Sudoku to the extent where you're now entering Sudoku competitions, which is brilliant to hear. So, Alex, I hope you have an absolutely brilliant birthday with, of course, a, an enormous amount of of cake um what else what other, what other news is there well uh we've just released our september monthly reward over on patreon so if you're a patron of the channel and why wouldn't you be go over there try the competition puzzles you've got until the 20th of september to enter the competition the feedback we've been getting so far has been that the puzzles are really good and quite approachable so everybody should be able to have a go um other than that, we've also got, of course, uh, our celebration for reaching 500,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is this uh, free app that we've released. So just go to Steam, go to the App Store, go to Android, download a free app called Cracking the Cryptic, and then download a pack in that app called 500, called something like 500 subscriber special or something. There are 23 puzzles in there by the great and good of the Sudoku world. They are wondrous to behold. So do have a go. You will, you will spend an awful lot of hours with a lot of enjoyment. And thank you so much to all those of you who've supported us in reaching that milestone. Now, all that said and done, I think I'm going to have to try this miracle triomino. It is miraculous. It is genuinely miraculous that this solves. Um, but do have a go yourselves. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. 
And now I get to play Let's Get Cracking. I mean, let's get cracking by writing in the digit I can see we can get straight away because we're told that this red diagonal is either ascending or descending. So if it starts here and it descends, well, you know, and actually if it ascends, let's say it goes one, two, three, four, five, although the line is descending, the numbers are ascending. So it's either going to go like that, or of course, we're going to start here and it's going to go like that. So either way, I think we get a five in the middle of the grid. And that is, and of itself, probably not enough to solve the puzzle. Um, although I am now actually wondering whether I can do something with that five, which is rather peculiar. Yeah, okay. Now, all right. I think I'm assisted in this next thought by the fact that I solved a remarkable puzzle the other day by full deck and missing a few cards. Uh, two maths professors from the US. And that, I can't remember what that puzzle was called, but it was, it was called something like cross or a or cross the domino or something. Uh, there was an amazing puzzle that used modular arithmetic. And it's just occurring to me here that I can actually say something about the grid just what, just from this one digit. Uh, let's just highlight that digit for a moment. That digit, yeah, I, I can definitely say something about the grid. So that digit, what happens when that digit is divi divided by three? Well, the answer is, you get one three, there's, it go, three goes into five once, and then there is a remainder of two. And that's actually quite interesting, because if we look at, say, that triomino there, and look at those two digits, we therefore know that for these three digits to be, divi to be divisible by three, the sum of these three digits to be divisible by three, if this has a remainder of two when it's divided by three, these two digits, the sum of those two digits, must have a remainder of one when they're divided by three. So that overall, the two and the one sort of add together and give us something that's precisely divided by three. So let, let's prove that to ourselves. Let's make this square, what could it be? It's on the end of a thermometer. Let's make it a nine. So if this was a nine, five plus nine is 14. So to, to be divisible by three, this would have to be either a one, a four, or a seven to make sure that string is divided, uh, divisible by three. But you can see that nine plus one here is equal to 10. And if you divide 10 by three, you get th three, three goes into 10 three times with a remainder of one. So this, this domino we could describe as having, you know, a mod of one, a remainder of one when divided by three. This has a remainder of two div when divided by three. So overall, that triomino is exactly divisible by three, which is what the rules tell us it must be. But the question that I'm thinking about is what then is this cell? Because this domino we know must have a remainder of one when divided by three. So the only way that this triomino is going to be divisible by three is, you've guessed it, if this cell here has a remainder of two when it's divided by three. In other words, this this cell here has the same modulus as this when divided by three. So this must either be two, five or eight. So if you divide two by three, you get zero. Two goes into three, zero times there's a remainder of two. If you divide it into five, well, we've already done that. If you divide eight by three, it goes twice with a remainder of two. So although we don't know what these two digits are, we do sort of know well, we know exactly what the remainder is when red is divided by three, and therefore we know this square must be yellow. But that logic, <laughs> this is what happened in the other puzzle, that logic propagates, doesn't it? Because we can, we can argue, or we can use that logic about any domino attaching to a yellow square. That domino must, be, must have a remainder of one when divided by three in order that that triomino is divisible by three. So that means every third cell from a yellow cell is and must be yellow in terms of, so it must be a two, five or an eight. And in fact, let's carry on. We're gonna end up with a sort of weird disjoint set 
of yellow cells that must be the digits 2, 5 and 8. And, well, these, these ones are not able to be 5. Ah, and this is why this diagonal's here. Yes, because this, this diagonal, remember, is either ascending or descending. So this is either a 2 or an 8, and that's either a 2 or an 8. So, so now, where do we put the 5 in this column? It's got to go there. And where do we put the 5 in this column? It's got to go there by Sudoku. It is outrageous, Samantha. You're making me do Sudoku at this point of the puzzle. So this, right, I'm now convinced that the way that this, this will solve is through using these sorts of chains of moduluses and right but how do we do that i can see now the tip of yeah maybe it's the tip and tail of this thermo now which we've re we now have two a two eight pair looking at these squares so we can't put two and eight in there so let me just think about this that could be one if if that's four, three, no, that can't be two. Oh, no, 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 no. Right, right. No, come back to this diagonal again. Because if this goes one, two, three, four, five, six, that's one thing. But if it goes the other way, and this is one, two, three, this is four, and this is six, there's a four, six pair in this, in this box. And this thermometer is therefore going to do more work than I first appreciated. So this can't be four actually, for two reasons. It can't be four because there's already a four in the box and it can't be four because this can't be a two. So this digit, which is the fourth cell along the thermo, must be at least a seven now because it can't be four, five or six. And this digit, does that have to be Yes, this digit can't be a 7, because if this is 7, it would go 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is lower than 7. It can't be 4, 5, or 6. So this is 1, 2, or 3. And what we need to do here is establish more modulo things, don't we? Oh, look, of course, we've got the 2, 8 pair here. So this can't be 8. This can't be 2. So we're only left with two possibilities on the thermo. So if this is 9... 9 and 5, this would have to be a 1 in order for this to be divisible by 3. 9, 5, 1, and that puts no pressure on the thermo at all. If that's 7, 7 and 5 is 12. This would have to be a 3. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> this is just beautiful. This is one of those puzzles. We're probably going to be done quickly today because I think this is going to go crazy now. But, but it's it's just so imaginative to do this it's it is it is the universe singing to us because watch now if this is seven seven and five are divisible by three because they equal 12 which means this cell to keep this triomino divisible by three must itself be divisible by three well this cannot be a seven three pair because what on earth are we going to put along the thermo we're going to have to put fours, fives and sixes, which are not allowed. So seven and three doesn't work, which means this must be nine to keep the, the triomino working. This has now got to be one. And now, of course, we can just propagate the moduluses, if that's an expression that anyone's ever heard before. So one, when divided by three, gives a remainder of one. So that is different from obviously the the yellow cell so we'll give this the moniker of blueness and nine when divided by three has gives a remainder of zero so we'll give that the moniker of what's going to be good red i never like to use colors or maybe colors that people uh, that offend people's color blindness but maybe blue and red are sufficiently different but now just using our domino logic again we know that domino for example What's the, what's the modulus of the sum of these two digits? What's the remainder when these two digits are divided by three? We can work it out because that triomino must be divisible by three in total. This has a remainder of one when divided by three. So this must, this, the sum of those two digits must have a remainder of two when divided by three. And that means, of course, that 
when we move to this triomino, that cell must have the same remainder when divided by three as this one. So that's blue. Um, that's blue. Diagonals, oh, hang on, this is going to go nuts because now we've got this, that's got to be blue. Every third cell is now blue, but I've just remembered I've got diagonals to consider. You know, it's necessary that these two must be mod two when divided by three. So that one's got to be mod one when divided by three. Oh, I see, and we just get a disjoint subset of blue digits beneath beneath our yellow digits so that we can do the same with red now. Red, 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 just by an extension of the logic. And we've made a very interesting looking Neapolitan ice cream now. And the trick is going to be, how do we extend this then? We've got, we've probably got to look at these cells. Maybe actually that cell is the most restricted because it sees two, five, and eight, and it sees lots of things in its box. So from a Sudoku perspective, this could be three. It can't be four, five, or six. It could be seven. It can't be eight. So it's three or seven. Um, okay. So does that tell us the answer to the life, the universe, and everything? Or maybe we've got to think about this digit as well. Maybe that's why this thermometer is four cells long. Let's check this cell as well. Um, in fact, maybe the thing to do is just check this cell by reference to that triomino there. Because nine, of course, has a zero remainder when divided by three. Yeah, yes, of course, this is easy, actually. This can't be six, because if this is six, six and nine is 15, which is already divisible by three. So for this triomino to be divisible by three, that's got to be divisible by three. There's only one more digit in Sudoku land left that's divisible by three if we can't use six and nine, and that is a three. And this can't be a two because of the two, five, eight triple. So this breaks. So this is, well, this is perfect. So now we know that's four. And now we know this cell Oh, yeah, this is yellow. OK, four and nine is 13. When you divide 13 by three, you get a remainder of one. So this cell, when it's divided by three, must have a remainder of two in order to make sure that this is divisible by three in total. Divisible by uh, uh, digits that have a remainder of two are yellow. So that is yellow. And now look what happens. <laughs> These two digits. Let's look at this triomino. Let's see if the line tool works for this. Yes, it does. So this little this little triomino here, we know this has got a remainder of two. That's got a remainder of two. So, so far we're up to a remainder of four if we divide the sum of these two digits by um, by three. Well, that, that doesn't really make sense, does it? Because that means that we can obviously divide four itself by three and we get a remainder of one. So the net effect of these two digits is that there's a remainder of one when they are summed together. You can prove that to yourself. Let's make this an eight for a moment. Five plus eight is 13. So again, a remainder of one because threes into 13 go four times with a remainder of one. So this cell, in order to make sure the modulus works, must have a remainder of two when divided by three, which means it is, of course, yellow. And that's going to just work. Um, sorry, let me get rid of that. Along the whole diagonal, that logic just propagates itself. So that whole diagonal is now yellow. This digit can go this way, three cells, so that's yellow. This way, three cells, that's yellow. Uh, that's yellow by three, three away from this rule. That's yellow by three away from this. And yeah, we can just get another of these sort of, not that one, uh, another of these disjoint subsets here. I think those are all yellow and I've not done this one yet, which is going to lead to a whole a completely new section of yellowness in those cells. So actually every diagonal cell is yellow. Well, once you get a yellow on a diagonal, it just propagates up the diagonal. But what's four? Ah, four has the same remainder as one when divided by three. It's got a remainder of one. So that's blue. This is now a six, which has a zero remainder. So that's red. 
and now we can just disjoint we can get all of these look we just do this all of those have got to be read by the same logic we can do the blues that are associated with this blue one all i'm doing is going three away every time so we're going to get a whole load of blues there so we now and now we've got two blues on a diagonal there so that must be blue that must be blue everything is blue on these diagonals <laughs> um it's, it's, it, it is miraculous this is absolutely miraculous these have all got to be red now and the only thing I'm not sure about is well that looks like yes it's three away from that so I could have done that before that is blue so there we go we've colored the grid we now know the remainders of all the digits when all the digits are divided by three let's get rid of this line we don't need that anymore I don't think and see if we can solve the puzzle so this digit here we now know actually because we know it's either two five or eight we know it can't be five there's a five in the box you definitely can't put a two as the third cell on a thermometer so that's eight which means that's two um now <laughs> pregnant pause while i work out what that means I feel like that means something very important. I'm trying to work out what that digit is. I suppose we've got 14 here, so it can't be three, because three is mod zero. Yes, of course, it's just modulus. Uh, a blue digit has to be a one, a four, or a seven, because it needs to have a one remainder when divided by three. So that's seven, which means that's three to complete the box and the red modulus. So now, have we done the puzzle is it really oh i see i see why it works i see i was thinking well how are we going to propagate these numbers but of course we now know or we have known probably for a while how this diagonal works so we can go one two three four five six seven eight nine that gives me a two here an eight here an eight here and a two here and now i bet yeah look we know there's a red three in this box and it can only go there by sudoku so now this is going to turn into a very strange a very strange puzzle where we're effectively doing sudoku on just three numbers at a time that's got to be a three that's got to be a three all the threes are done have we got yes we've got a nine here so that's got to be nine that's got to be six that's got to be nine that's got to be six <laughs> um that's got to be six that's got to be nine that's got to be nine that's got to be six nine six that's a six that's a six that's a nine that's a nine that's a six and all the red digits are suddenly filled in oh goodness me one where does one go in this box it's got to be in a blue square so that's a one which means that's a one by sudoku um now that that's a one by sudoku does this keep going where's one in this box there so this i mean this has been put together with so much aplomb it's just it is the serrano de bergerac of miracle sudokus because it's got so much panache it really is just beautiful it's just filling in it's just literally filling in i'm not doing anything clever other than just filling in digits seven four and all I've got left to do is the twos, the fives, and the eights. So that's two, that's five by Sudoku. Therefore, that's five, that's five. That's got to be a two, that's got to be a two, that's got to be an eight, that's got to be an eight. Therefore, that's an eight, that's a two. That's an eight, that's a five. That's a five, that's a two. That's a five, that's an eight. Nearly made a mistake. And that's the finished puzzle. Wow 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 so even though that seemed absolutely impossible when i first read the rules it's actually not you just have to force your brain to understand the implication of one digit in the puzzle which is this digit and how when it's divided by three it gives a remainder of two and once you have that thought you can just propagate propagate the five or its modulus all around the grid and then it's just a little bit of work with this little th thermometer here, a little bit of thinking about the diagonal. And Samantha Mukherjee, take a bow, my friend, because that is absolutely brilliant. Loved it. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.